Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about the concept of vendor lock-in. As you're considering different solutions for your organization, you may have heard the term vendor lock-in thrown around as a negative, but is it really? Today, I wanted to talk about why vendor lock-in doesn't matter. First, we have to start with the definition, right? We can't talk about vendor lock-in unless we define it. So vendor lock-in is the idea that once you've chosen a vendor for a particular product or service, you are stuck with that vendor. You can't switch to another vendor without incurring significant costs. Now those costs could be financial, but they could also be in terms of time and effort. Usually the source of the lock-in is the proprietary nature of the product or service. Now part of that is data-driven. Once you've loaded your data into their proprietary system and organized it using their data structures, it can be extremely challenging to migrate that data onto a different system. Another facet of lock-in is process and operations. The product or service will have specific ways of accomplishing a goal, and your organization will inevitably build processes and institutional knowledge that accommodates the product. Moving to a different vendor, even when the data structures are the same, means changing processes and retraining staff. That's not nothing. And of course, there is the financial aspect. If you've invested a significant amount of money into a product or a service, you're gonna be hesitant to throw that investment away and start over with a different vendor. It's the sunk cost fallacy. And vendors know that they can raise the prices of their solutions over time if the pain of moving is greater than the pain of staying. Not all vendors, but certainly some vendors. Let's use a real world example. Let's say you're a company that selected VMware as their virtualization platform of choice. You're using vSphere, you're using vSAN, NSX, and vRealize to manage your virtualization environments. You've invested a lot of time and money into building out your VMware environment, and you've trained your staff on how to use the VMware tools. You've built processes around those tools, and you've integrated them into your automation pipelines. You're pretty much all in on VMware. So what happens when you want to leave? Now, migrating the virtual machines themselves is no small feat, but you can do it. Retraining your staff and replacing your existing operations and process is a whole other consideration, and I'd argue the much larger challenge. So should you strive to avoid vendor lock-in? What does that mean? What are the alternatives? The panacea for avoiding vendor lock-in seems to be open source software. After all, the software is open source and freely available for all to use. You can download the source code, compile it yourself, and run it on your own hardware. You can even make changes to the code and submit those changes back to the community. It's the ultimate in freedom and flexibility. <laughs> no vendor lock-in here. Except that's not really true. Open source software can still have lock-in. It's just a different kind of lock-in. Let's take a look at the example of Kubernetes. Let's say you're running a full open source Kubernetes environment. You've got a cluster running on bare metal servers with an open source operating system. You're using open source tools like Helm and Customize to deploy your applications. You're using Prometheus and Grafana to monitor your cluster. There is nary a vendor in sight. Well, you might not have a single vendor bill to pay and you can always migrate to another Kubernetes distribution, another operating system, or another deployment tool, but you're still locked in. You've built processes around the open source tools you're using. You've trained your staff on how to use those tools. You've integrated those tools into your automation pipelines. You're pretty much all in on Kubernetes. That sounds suspiciously like the VMware example, doesn't it? You've avoided vendor lock-in, but you haven't avoided lock-in, it's just a different form of the same problem. And that problem comes down to making choices in technology. Every time you make a choice in technology, you're making a trade-off. 
you are trading the flexibility to change vendors for the benefits of a particular solution. You are trading the ability to easily migrate between solutions for the ability to use the special features of the solution you've chosen. Whether the solution comes from a vendor or is open source, you are making a choice and that choice will have consequences. Going with a particular vendor exhibits a certain element of risk. You are trusting that the vendor will continue to provide the service you've come to rely on, that they will continue to innovate and provide new features and functionality. They'll continue to support the product or service you've chosen and continue to stay in business. Maybe that's an unacceptable risk and you'd rather pursue an open source project. But that comes with its own elements of risk. Who are the maintainers of the project? Are you going to be able to dedicate staff to maintaining the version of the project that meets your needs? What if those people leave? Are you going to be able to find someone who can support your customized version of the project? What if the open source project is abandoned? Are you going to be able to find a suitable alternative or keep the project alive internally? Open source, non-vendored solutions have their own inherent risks. Ultimately, vendor lock-in doesn't matter because the concept of lock-in is an illusion. You can always move to a different platform. It's just a matter of how much time, effort, and money you're willing to spend to make that move. If the current solution is bad enough or a new solution provides sufficient benefits, you can move to any platform you want. It's a matter of evaluating the costs and benefits of the move. Speaking of costs, the largest cost in, long, in the long term is your people. <laughs> the people who have to learn how to use the technology, who have to build processes around the technology, who have to maintain that technology. When you consider the salaries of all of those people, suddenly the licensing cost of a vendor technology doesn't seem so important. Vendor lock-in is a concept that it's often thrown around, and like I said, it's framed as a negative. But the reality is that lock-in itself is an illusion and isn't particularly helpful in deciding which technology to use. Instead, you should be evaluating the costs and benefits of a particular solution, assessing the inherent risk, and making a decision based on that criteria. Whether it's a vendored solution, pure open source, or something in between, you are going to have to make a choice, and that choice will have consequences. The alternative is making no decision, and that in itself is a decision too. At least those are my thoughts on vendor lock-in. I would love to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below and let me know how you're thinking about lock-in and how it informs your decisions. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.